Praise the Lord. I'm uh, sorry, our pastor that's supposed to lead us on the uh, hymn, we couldn't uh, connect with him. So we rise up as we sing in 245. Is your life a channel of blessing? The orchestra will lead us on the song. In two, four, five. Yeah. 
fire. found only in Jesus Christ the Son, channels of my spirit. Dimensions found only in Jesus Christ the Son, channels of my spirit. Jesus Christ, all things are new for me. Child us of my spirit. Channels of my spirit. Oh, yes, in this over season. Strong. 
Amen. 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 I want to read the scripture. I know I have five minutes to do that. And it's in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 15. I read in verse 25. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you the Lord Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Chosen men, men that have hazarded their lives for our Lord Jesus Christ, and I would say for the brethren. Another scripture is in First Chronicle chapter twelve. In First Chronicle chapter twelve, I read verse thirty-one. And of the half tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand which were expressed by name to come and make their living. And of the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. I have the privilege of working with a man who have understanding of what the church ought to do in this season. If you started this service with us, been with us from the beginning, you have seen the seminars, which is very unusual to us as a church, Sunday having seminar, Sunday service. But a man of God has understanding of what the church ought to do at a time like this, that the church needs something like this, like the men of Issachar. Chosen men like in the Acts chapter 15, who will resolve issues at difficult times. In Galatians chapter 4, chapter 4 verse 19, we have a man there, Paul said, I travail in pain until Christ be forming you. Just to stay at the limit of my time. Those three scriptures, 
describe the man I want to present before you today, who is going to bring the word of life unto us. And at the beginning, we prayed and we said, we're told this year that believe God, believe his prophets, and so you'll be established. So I have the privilege of presenting to you this afternoon a man who have understanding of the time, a man who have hazarded his life for the gospel of Jesus and for the sake of the brethren, a man who have travailed in prayer so that the church can move forward, so that the people of God can be blessed. He is no other person than our region overseer, the person of Pastor Michael Dada. Can you please join me to welcome him to the podium as he prays to us the bread of life? So wherever you are, can you just wave on him, wave to him, and as we welcome our region overseer, Pastor Michael Dada to give us a word of life. You're welcome, sir. God bless you. You look beautiful today. Thank you so you much, uh, Pastor Ati. God bless you. And thanks to all our pastors you, in all the locations. Uh, thank you also to all our leaders, all our workers, and all the members of the church. We bless the name of the Lord for the spirit of unity and oneness that the Lord has given unto us by which and through which we're able to do what we are doing and able to move forward in the region and in the nation as a whole. I pray that more of the grace of God will be upon your lives in Jesus' name. Uh, we have been richly and mightily blessed through all those that have ministered to us from the time of prayer, time of singing, time of teaching and everything and I pray that all those things will not be in vain in Jesus name uh, shall we close our eyes bow our heads as we pray to the Lord in prayer precious father glorious Lord eternal God everlasting King we come before you today and thank you for bringing us this far in the year 2020 when the year began five months ago little did we know at the time we come in the history of the world that there's something called global lockdown something called global meltdown such as we have seen it now the talk of the great depression we are being told that the challenges of this time is way more than what they went through at that time we least expected that within two, three months, tons of tens of thousands of people will be dead worldwide. And in this nation alone, that over 100,000 people are now dead and buried. But you have kept us alive, not because we are wiser, not because we are better, not because of anything, but because of your mercy. I want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, as we share together, bless us the more. Help us to understand, again, the signs of the time that you have kept and preserved us so that we can be all that you have ordained for us to be in this generation and at this particular point in time in Jesus' name. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated wherever you are. And uh, I am glad to let you know that I saw online that we're not just that we have people from different states in the country joining us in this uh, service this morning. Uh, because we have people not just from within our region, uh, but beyond. We have people that are not even Africans that are joining, and we have people all the way back from Nigeria. I saw some of them that uh, are connecting from Nigeria joining the service today. Uh, wherever you are connecting from, I pray the power of the Lord will touch you there. The blessings of the Lord will come upon you in Jesus' name. At this time, we are looking at the message. 
profiting from COVID-19 by launching out into the deep. Profiting from COVID-19 by launching out into the deep. My text is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through to 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them. Mark that word, uh, that statement. The fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your net for a trot. And Simon answered said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came, and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. I need an amen there. And when they had brought their sheep to land, they forsook all and followed him. They saw something spectacular. They saw something uh, miraculous. They saw something beyond their imagination. And uh, I trust the Lord, believe the Lord, that just like that day became the end of failure in the life of Peter, the end of mystery, the end of mischief, today is the 31st day in the month of May, the month of miracle the month of marching forward, I pray and end we come to all the sorrows and the sadness and the failures and disappointments of your life in Jesus' name. We're living at such a time that the men, the heart of men are failing them. We're living at such a time that discouragement is everywhere. People are afraid of death. People are afraid of uh, poverty. People are afraid of losing their job. People are afraid of catching sicknesses and diseases. As a matter of fact, you see people now when they get sick, for them to go to hospital is a problem because you have just a little sickness, you go to hospital, and then you go and get COVID. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. And so, the words, the statements, the report everywhere is scary, very, very scary. But hear the word of the Lord in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 4. The Bible says, now, uh, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. This is the word of the Lord. Something miraculous is about to happen to somebody in Jesus' name. Because we are told in Job, in chapter 22, verse 29, that when men are cast down, thou, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up. I said there is lifting up. For you there is lifting up. For your family there is lifting up in Jesus' name. When men, when men are cast down, when men are discouraged, when men are troubled, you will declare by the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, by the anointing of the Lord upon your life, that there is lifting up and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Look at this case now. Come back again to Luke chapter 5. The Bible tells us there in verse 2 that the fishermen were gone out. They were gone out of their ship because they toiled all night. 
nothing happened. They already were packing up. They already were washing their nets. They already were quitting. And the Lord wants me to tell you, if you are planning to quit, don't quit. Because your miracle is around the corner in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, when you hear about COVID, there is not to be afraid of. Do you hear what I said? There is not to be afraid of. If you, if you were here at the beginning, I told them over here that when they say COVID, you say covered. If you, if you see, remember that, that message, when they say COVID, you say covered. And to God's glory, we can tell that of the truth, we are covered. By the blood of Jesus, we are covered. By the angels of the Lord, we are covered. By the protective hand of the Lord, we are covered in Jesus' name. And so, you turn that word COVID into something that a lot of people are doing already today. Are doing today. Because why people are saying we lost our job. As a matter of fact, I'm still going to give you a little statistics later on. Uh, about uh, over 40 million people that have lost their job and now depending on social security in this country alone. But then, but then, why do all those are going on? There are people that are profiting from this same time. So, when you hear about COVID, write it down yourself and tell yourself, COVID means creativity. It's a time for you to become creative. It's time to be resourceful. It's time to be ingenuity. It's time to become visionary. It's time to become inspirational about something, creativity. When you hear about COVID, say to yourself, it is opportunity, opportunity, opportunity for me to get, to accomplish what I have not accomplished all this while, objectively, objective opportunity. And then when you hear about COVID, you say to yourself, it is a time for viability. You are viable. You are visible. And you are somebody that people will connect with in Jesus' name. When I say viability, it means uh, possibility, sustainability. And then, what about COVID? What's the next letter in COVID? I, ideas. Great ideas. Great ideas. You know, when this thing started, and then they were talking about a uh, face mask, and uh, there is no face mask, I told some people, I said, do we have tailors and seamstress in our church? I said, this is a time for them to make money. Praise the Lord. And you know, you know, thank God for deeper life people. Thank God, thank God. And someone said, well, I mean, I don't want to make a, I don't want to profit out of the problem that people are going through. Well, whether you do it or not, somebody's going to do it. If you don't do it, you are not taking advantage of them. It's a need of the hour. And so, um, eventually, some of them got into doing it, and they are getting blessed by the grace of God in Jesus' name. So, you come up with new ideas in your business, new ideas of evangelism for us as a church. Can you imagine for one month, for two months, we couldn't come to church to get up together? New ideas. I'm already thinking right now, after COVID, is church service going to remain the same? Things are going to change. I'm still going to be sharing the vision with our pastors later on because uh, it's a time for new ideas. Uh, many of us never knew what Zoom was before. Many of us never knew how to do all this internet thing before. But you can tell all this our old mamas and papas now, they know what is internet. They know how to get there and things are grow, going to change in Jesus' name. Ideas for church growth. idea for fundraising. idea for knowledge because things are going to change. When you hear about COVID, the letter D stands for diversification. Learn to diversify. Learn not to just stay in one thing, stick to one thing, and then everything collapses on you. To diversify is to expand, is to spread out, is to broaden your horizon. And then when you hear about COVID, you say to yourself, COVID virus is my time of victory. And you'll be victorious in Jesus' name. You will not die, you will not perish. It's a time for interconnectivity. You now need to begin to network together with other people that can be of value to you. You heard the pastor saying earlier on that if you know yourself to be a man of value, then you add value to, your, to yourself, to your life. And then you connect with other men and women of value. And then COVID stands for a virus now for restoration of lost glory. Somebody is going to be restored. 
of the years that the locusts have eaten and the palmer worm destroyed, the Lord will restore them back in Jesus' name. It's a time of unlimited privileges. Unlimited privileges. And so, think. Don't just say, stay home watching television. Think every step of the way. Think every day of your life. What can I get out of this? How can I make my life better? How can I impact others? How can I be a blessing to others? Uh, and then you come up with your skill. The skill you need to succeed in life. Uh, because many a time, we strive for mastery without anything to show for it. But this time around, something will come out of it in Jesus' name. The normal human instinct for Peter, for James, for John, and the other fishermen that were there in the passage where we read in the book of Luke, the normal instinct for everybody is to quit after a few trials. But throwing in the towel before the fight actually ended could be the worst decision of a lifetime because just one more punch may finally doom the foe of your life. Just one more point will bring an end to all the struggles of your life. Just one more effort. Just one more effort. Just one more effort. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. I think let me tell you a, a story. You know, I've not got into the heart of the message. I'm still wetting the ground. It was a case of a man that was uh, trying to bring down a mountain. And the man tried and tried dealing blow to the rock to the mountain and nothing happened because uh, he said i can do it i can do it and he tried and tried and tried and tried and nothing happened but while he was busy doing that there was a man that was busy watching what he was doing and the man was impressed and said this gentleman this young man must be very brave was very courageous, was very determined. Unfortunately, it got to a point that the man looked at the mountain. The mountain is going nowhere. And then he looked at the, the, the hammer, and the hammer is getting battered. He looked at himself getting weak and getting tired. And then he looked at the hammer again, and then he flung it away. And then he made a U-turn to begin to go. As he was walking away, then the older man that was there watching and observing him then came down from where he was walked towards him and said young man i have been watching you all the while with keen interest and as you were hitting the rock what happened and then he said i came with determination to break this rock but i have done everything possible nothing is happening if you've ever heard me talk about that phrase, that when it seems like nothing is happening, something is happening. It is from this very story I coined that statement out. And the old man said, well, you have been doing this all this while. You don't know that every blow you are dealing on the rock is weakening the rock. It's weakening the rock. Who knows? Just a little bit more, may, uh, uh, the rock will give way. And so the young man picked up Corey just a little bit more, just a little bit more. He went back, picked up the hammer again, and then began to deep blow on the rock. After a few blows, the rock gave way. Every rock standing before you will give way. Every mountain of obstruction before your life, the Lord will bulldoze them out of your way in Jesus' name. Never give up, never give up. Success may be near even though it may seem so far away. If not for Jesus, Peter would have missed a lifetime of, of, of opportunity of getting the drought that they finally caught. Many of us are like Peter, currently packing up our nets and giving up the effort, giving up the fight, giving up the ministry, giving up our job, giving up our business, giving up our career, giving up the school you started attending, Jesus is telling somebody here today to hold on, hold on, don't quit, fight on, stay on, hope on, and launch out into the deep because your miracle is about to happen in Jesus' name. Your life has a meaning. Let no devil tell you 
that you are hopeless, that you are helpless. Let no devil tell you that your life is meaningless. You were created for a purpose. And before you go to the grave, your, purpose, your life purpose will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And hear me, hear me well. That going to the grave is not even now because you will live your time on earth. You will not die before your time in Jesus' name. I look at three points. Number one, the discouragement of fainting soldiers. The discouragement of fainting soldiers. Understand, every Christian man, Christian woman are soldiers. We are warriors in this part of eternity. Point number two, the determination of fervent servants. The determination of fervent servants. And then finally, the decoration of faithful stewards. The decoration of faithful stewards. Come back to point number one. The discouragement of fainting soldiers. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. The Bible tells us there, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. I pray you will not faint in your walk with the Lord. You will not faint in your commitment to the Lord. You will not faint in your consecration to the Lord in Jesus' name. Come to that Luke again, chapter 5. Chapter 5. The discouragement of fainting soldiers. Uh, chapter 5 from verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people passed by praise upon him to hear the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. He stood by the lake of Genesare. Please stop right there. What is happening in your life right now is for a purpose. What you think is a failure is a success turned in, uh, inside out. Um, don't give up. Don't lose up. That little challenge you are having, that little obstruction you are having, that little delay you are having, that little disappointment you are having is going to be for God's glory. God will use it to turn things around. God will use it to, be, to, be, to bless people around you in Jesus' name. Verse 2. And saw two ships standing by the lake. Standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and took the people out of the ship. Out of the ship. Out of the ship. The ship that couldn't catch fish. The fish that couldn't profit the owner. The fish that was now abandoned. Uh, and now Jesus turned it. The stumbling block became a stepping stone to success and to excellence. Uh, verse 4. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch up into the deep and let down your net for a drop. Pay attention before I get to the fifth verse. Uh, if you will release yourself, you release your time, your talent uh, unto the Lord to use, the Lord will pay you back in many fold in Jesus' name. Peter released his resources. Peter released his property. Peter released what he had onto the master, just like that little boy with uh, two fishes and five loaves. Uh, the little child gave out what he heard, uh, and then those things, the two fishes and the five loaves, uh, were blessed, were broken, and then were distributed. Somebody is going to be distributed to become a blessing meeting the needs of people around in the name of Jesus. And so, understand the signs of the time. Verse 5, verse 5. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. We have toiled all the night. That is the case of many of us. A minister, while we were, um, you see, we were collaborating with some other ministries and churches in times like this, and one of them, while talking yesterday, quoted from William Ward, William Otter Ward, the statement that says, adversity causes some men to break, while it helps others to break record. I pray in this time of life we break record in Jesus' name. We have here the scenario with, with Peter, with James, with John, and the rest of the fishermen, we have a scenario of fruitlessness, of hopelessness, of frustration and disappointment. We see the case of professional fishers that look like novice. The wise people looking like foolish. 
we see the case of experienced people the situation that befell them made them look like uh, uh, like immature people experienced fishermen generally if you ask from those that learn about fishery uh, they will tell you that real fishing is done in the night you don't do fishing in the day for people that are just uh, uh, not real fishermen they do that in the day but real fishermen they do their work in the middle of the night because the waters at that time are becoming calm the heat of the day is getting on and then the fishes are now more active in the middle of the night that is why fishermen go on the sea go on the water in the middle of the night while people are sleeping and that's why peter said we have done this all night now the day break and now jesus was there and people were coming to listen to jesus and the fishermen were packing up their net fisherman i don't know what you are fishing from you are not packing up in jesus name i say you are not packing up the ministry god has given you the call of god upon your life no matter what is happening you are not packing up in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we have toiled all night said peter and so is the case with many of us uh, i don't know about you but as for me many a times i have questioned what else do we do to move the church forward what else do we do to make the church more vibrant what else do we do to make the church more more, more marketable and uh, sometimes uh, uh, you, you, you get discouraged because you come to understand that only 20 percent of the people in the church are doing the work of 80 percent of the people in the church and out of the 20 percent that are even contributing financially to the church maybe only 20 percent of the 20 percent is having a real good job the remaining 80 percent of that 20 percent are doing some mini job and so how do we solve this how do we progress how do we make things happen and then you do all that you can do nothing seems to be happening hear the word of the lord again when it seems like nothing is happening something somebody tell me something is happening something is happening our breakthrough is happening our liberation is happening our open door is happening in the name of jesus we are moving forward we are making progress in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and as if that is not enough for the church then covid virus struck covid virus came like a pandemic that defies solution beating the imaginations of long time reliable dependable scientists of our time and for months we have been locked in we have been locked down we have been locked out but hear the word of the lord our release has come i said our release has come in the name of jesus because in the light of what is going on both the rich and the poor are in panic mode hence the hearts of men are failing for them luke chapter 21 verse 26 this it tells us it says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the air for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and that's exactly what is happening right now the powers of heaven shall be shaken you see the powerful nation of the the most powerful nation on earth today is now the most heat nation on earth powerless couldn't do anything what causes discouragement because you say if this is happening to the green tree what then are we going to say about the dry tree if this is happening to a nation like america what hope is left there for others that are there don't worry our hope is in the lord i said our hope is in the lord and the lord will make ways for us in jesus name we have some of the seminarians they said it again and again a lot of big corporations are folding up some of them are declaring bankruptcy and on and on so how about you the small one the lord is our refuge, our very present help in time of need and so what causes this for us as a church we look at us as a church 
We look at us as a family. We look at us as individuals for the church. We'll see that fruitlessness and lack of growth despite concerted effort. It's what we can relate with. You have done evangelism. You talk about uh, this type of evangelism, that type of evangelism, boss evangelism, street evangelism, personal evangelism, friendship evangelism, media evangelism, all kinds of evangelism. Where is the result? The result is coming. I said the result is coming because things will begin to turn around in Jesus' name. Pay attention. It's the same sheep that Peter used in fishing that caught nothing. It was the same water where Peter was fishing that he caught nothing. Jesus didn't reinvent anything. It's just the word of authority, the word of power, the anointing of the Lord, the timing of God. Jesus simply said, launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep and let down your net and let down your net. And Peter simply obeyed and the miracle happened. This year, 2020, miracle is going to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what disheartens the heart of the people, frivolous Christianity that on the place, the danger of hell and the reality of heaven. There are people in our churches. When I was saying our churches, I'm talking about the global church now. That the way they live their life, the way they call themselves Christians and the things they do is, is, is annoying. And this happening, that's why I say, frivolous Christianity that underplays the danger of hell and the reality of heaven. Number three, false brethren parading themselves as sheep, while in reality they are revealing wolves in sheep's clothing. And they are in our mean. And when this happened, when that happened, you say, ah, but they call themselves a Christian, but they say they are members of Deeper Life Bible Church. No, they are not members of the church. They are reveling walls in sheep's clothing. Number four, false finding foes. Demoralizing the willing and the ready laborer. We have them in the church. We have them all around. All they do is false finding. They never come around to appreciate you for what you are doing. To bless the Lord for what you are doing. To encourage for what you are doing. To share you off and make you feel like you want to do more. All the look for is what you did wrong, what you are doing wrong, and what even the ones you have not done what you will do wrong. They are always there. They are four pointers. They make Christianity uninteresting. They make serving the Lord uninteresting. But we are moving forward. Then you now see frequent friction among the clergy men that weakens and wearies the babes in the faith. When you see people that says they are leaders in the church, they are pastors in the church, they are ministers in the church and they, don't, they can't talk with one another. And the, what they do behind one another is unbelievable. And they, they talk about holiness and righteousness. And yet, they are agents of darkness against one another. It makes the heart of men to fail. It makes people that are young in the faith to want to go back into the world. Because they say, if they are the ones teaching us all this, and they are living this life, what hope lies for us in the future? But there is hope for you. In Jesus' name. And then, coming back now, to our economy, whether as individuals, as families, we see with COVID-19, a lot of things have happened. Forfeiture of employment, income is lost, businesses are packing up, and uh, like I told you earlier on, over 40 million people are now depending on social security, unemployment, just because of COVID-19. There is financial paralysis, that tend to question the reality of God's blessing upon our lives. But despite all this, we know our God lives. We know our God reigns. And we know our God is there for us in Jesus' name. And then you look at your own family and you see, you see frustration within the family. Frustration with unconverted children and uncooperative spouse. You see frustration 
here and there. Family pew every now and then, and then to top, uh, to top it off, you don't see death because of COVID in such a way that is unprecedented. You see, I checked this earlier this morning. When I said this morning, it was in the middle of the night. So the figure may have changed between then and now. As at the time I checked, the people infected with COVID worldwide were 6,161,485 people. Can you imagine? Infected. Out of all those, thank God, 2,738,333 have recovered. Praise the Lord. And some of you hearing me, you are one of them. Amen. You got attacked, but you got delivered. And you will remain delivered in Jesus' name. But then, we have active cases currently. 3,052,136. Now, this is the sad news. The cash out is now. 371,016 people dead. 371,000. I know you have all this information, but we need to hear it again. So as to know that you being alive, me being, uh, being alive is by the grace of God. Look at a place like New York. That the, 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 the plague just kind of wanted to take over the whole, the whole state. And the hospitals had no space again. Human beings, the dead bodies were being parked in bathroom, parking everywhere. It's unprecedented in the history of our time. We need to understand, evaluate the sense of our time. Educate ourselves on the steps forward. And then engage ourselves with the solution for the hour. Evaluate, educate, and then engage ourselves. Psalm 31 verse 23, be of good courage. This is Jesus speaking. Don't be discouraged like others. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. And ye that hope, all ye that hope in the Lord, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will present you. No matter what you are going through, uh, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, that for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, no matter, what, no matter what you go through, it's for a moment. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Weight of glory. Why we look not at things which are same, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are seen are eternal. The Lord wants to do something in your life that will outlive you in Jesus' name. That is, the way God will use you after you have gone to glory, the things you did will be speaking for you in Jesus' name. So, rejoice. Loosen up. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. The Lord has kept you for a purpose, and that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. The heart of men are fainting. Yours will be encouraged in the Lord in Jesus' name. Tell me again what the Bible says in Job chapter 22, verse 29. When men are cast down, what do you say? Then thou shalt say what? For you there is lifting up. For your family there is lifting up. For our church that is lifting up in Jesus' name. I get to the second point. The determination of fervent servants. The determination. When you're a determined person, what do you do? What do you do? You know, recently I share with people. Because a lot of times, people will say, ah, we are praying, we are praying. Praise God for prayer. And you know, if you've been around me, you know I love prayer. I, you know I love prayer. And I pray quite a lot. I may not pray the way many of you pray. <laughs> Wanting the whole world to know you are praying. Praise the Lord. Uh, I believe in the Bible that says you go into your closet, you lock your door. Don't just go to your closet. The Bible says you, what do you do? You lock your door and then you do it privately. And there are your heavenly father that you communicate with privately. He will reward you where? 
openly openly i believe strongly in that and then i look at the prayer life of jesus i look at the prayer of abraham i look at the prayer of david i look at the prayer of isaac i look at the different people that prayed i look at that man called elijah even when he was to pray he went on top of the mountain he didn't come to the marketplace and then he he, he put his face between his knee i tried that thing to put my face i was going to break my back I, I don't know how Elijah did it, but that's exactly what he did. He made it uh, uncomfortable for himself uh, because he needed a breakthrough. Praise the Lord. But when you see people just screaming and shouting everywhere and disturbing everybody, that is not the scriptural prayer. That is how the unbelievers, the idol worshippers, they do it. They call it chanting those days. And people that were into occultic practices, they came into the church and they brought all those things into the church. Uh, and then go and look at the Hare Krishna people, the way they do their chanting and all the rest. But real children of God, uh, we do it different. We don't scream at God. We don't shout on our God. Amen. We talk with God. Amen. We talk with God. Uh, that's different from when we are all together and then our voices will not be like the voice of many water. That is different. That is different. That's the type that happened in actual apostle. But when you're by yourself on your own, then you pray with understanding. You pray in the spirit and then you outline, Lord, this is the situation. These are my expectations. Not just screaming and shouting and all the rest. Uh, praise the Lord. And so I tell people, when we talk about faith, what is faith? Faith is work. Work. What are you doing? Anybody look at your Bible? You don't see anybody has faith without their work. It is the things they did, the work they did, that prove that they have faith. It's not they are jumping up and down and telling everybody, hey, I have faith, strong faith, big faith, mountain moving faith move the mountain first let us see when we see the mountain move then we know you have faith praise the lord go to hebrew chapter 11 i know you you you, you will recite for me verse one there but look at what follow by faith you see their works their works their works and apostle james he said show me your faith without your work and i will show you my faith by what by my work the determination of fervent servant these people are fervent. These people are determined. These people are enthusiastic. These people are passionate. These people are zealous for God and for the glory of God. They are commissioned men and women. They are soul winners and winning souls for the Lord. Living for God, they are not the type of people that just want to come and say, I'm born again and spirit feed and all they do is just come sit in the church you know there are people when you talk about evangelism they don't have time they are waiting for when somebody will labor somebody will swear somebody will do the work somebody will go to the extra and then you now say hey, go and pastor the people it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way you get up yourself you get out yourself i can tell you of many places in this place many states in this in this nation that we had no church there and then we just go there and then we do Jericho man by faith we didn't just expect that okay God will send people there and then we get we knew nobody we went there and then sometimes the very first day in a state in a city that we have never been before we get there and then there will be connections at other times not may happen for the first time not may happen for the first week but eventually i look around in those places today and by the grace of god we have deeper life churches there some of them more than one church more than two churches and i'm saying they just shall live by faith and if any man drop out if any man drop out from serving the lord from working for the lord from doing the will of the lord from being